It's interesting how, I don't know how it is for you guys or the people watching, but you don't know what this place is unless you come here. You don't. The BAM Center makes an amazing container. Um, I mean, it literally feels like a container because you're surrounded by these mountains. It's almost like your ideas have a chance to sort of settle in here. Our music is classified as what people call dark pop. Dark pop seems like it makes sense, has dark elements, has pop elements. Magazines and reviews kind of heralded as pop rock experimental stuff. I call it folk potronica because it's folk and pop writing sensibilities. We like to tell border guards that we play obnoxious pop music with a lot of noise and old broken keyboards. I knew bringing these bands down here that they were going to have an incredible time because the Banff Center is a magical place. The mountains just look at you and say, this is it. This is who you are. Essentially, bands from across Canada apply to come and have a, a two-week residency to focus and work on their music. This could fall away. Just go up. You're on. Music is like a compulsion. It's something that we all love to do and have lost jobs over and have lost sleepover, you know, it's just something that's within us. We're all hunted. When you're gonna let this go, I've been hiding now for days. I think collaborating is something that you should completely know how to do, because that means you're going beyond yourself, which is very important if you want to succeed. I write a lot about death and loss and I hope to make people feel something. Whether they love it or hate it, that's fine. When you start, you have a blank canvas and it's terrifying. That's the worst is when you don't know what you're going to do. As a songwriter, it's, it's quite a vulnerable state to be in. I had a lot of trouble, and I still do, putting everything on paper and kind of delivering it. It's such, a, it's such a naked state to be, and you're sharing it with complete strangers. In order to take advantage of the situation, they're giving up a little control producers are thrust on them. So, but obviously these bands want that input or else they wouldn't come here. I've always just kind of done my own thing forever and kind of ignored everyone else. So I'm just kind of acknowledging that and seeing how it goes. Some bands I spend more time with than others. I'm not here to uh, tell you what to do, nor am I here to convince you that you should listen to me. That's your choice. came here with nothing. She just finished a record. She's putting it out in November. I got, I got off the plane, I came a day late. I had people calling me saying that she's a little nervous, she doesn't have anything. Finally, by the time I got to the studio, she's, there was this gorgeous song, off the cuff, happening. I occasionally collaborate, but my newest record is just sort of treated a little bit differently in the studio. been jamming out, trying some new things today, um, 
plugging in some effects and doing some weird stuff on the floor by myself all morning. Kashka, she wants to try new approaches to music and they're essentially they're like creative push-ups in a way. You just need to keep your mind going and going. They're not, it's not so much about um, creating a, a, a final piece as much as doing more and more sketches of music so that you get your creative mind um, in, uh, fit. Later tonight I'm going to be uh, collaborating with um, a drummer and a viola that we saw on the first day. They were doing an improvised performance for us so I thought that was really neat so we're going to jam and we're going to attempt to write some songs in a couple hours. <laughs> I mean you never know what's going to come out. They're both coming from massively different backgrounds than I am so who knows. I don't even know what music they like. Definitely nice to see someone who understands collaboration and understands it takes people to make something happen. They're gonna get the time to, to work. That is the biggest problem for everybody, time. Time, everyone's fighting for time. the testing ground for potentially a new Boys Who Say No. A new direction where we actually just fully commit 24-7, just eat, sleep, breathe, writing music and performing. Hey, turn it down. Zero. <laughs> they told me that coming to this place was almost like a last ditch at effort, like can we make this work? This is a microscope for us to like really figure out what we're doing and just kind of come out the best version of what we are, I think. 11 may be the uh, vocal amp and 12 is the, the vocal normal. Oh yeah, there it is, there it is. Oh yeah. Oh, hey guys. This is weird, I can't see anybody. Uh, we're Boats, we're from Winnipeg, and uh, all these songs we wrote here in the last two weeks, so if I forget any lyrics, just leave. Our leader, his name is Matt, and he was performing under the name Boat originally about 10 years ago. As he got more musicians in the band, he changed the name to Boats, and it's been kind of a rotating cast of people for a long time, although I think that we've settled on a core group now, hopefully. Unlike a lot of the other bands that I think come out to here, we've been around for a while, and uh, we've had a lot of successes in a lot of places, but we have also had a lot of quite frustrating failures. I think Matt knows what he wants. Add a little bit, uh, just add a, don't, don't start right away. Just, yeah, just don't do that right away. Just do nothing for like oh, two okay. measures. I just sort of saw them and felt their energy and thought, okay, you guys can do your own thing. Uh, I'm not too sure if he's completely ready to let it all go, but that would only be from a, a short little time of seeing these guys. That's true. We could go into pre-chorus chorus again. I know. I know. And I don't like a. I want to hear how they sound individually and how they sound together. All right. Okay. Let's take it from the beginning and then just. Can we just move the? Fine. The verse. Fine. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't really like that part of this song. But have you been listening to my golden vocals? Just the like. <laughs> I think that's the most important part. It's catchy and it's a. Uh... Yeah, it's one of those, but you know, we're not one of those. In the past, Matt has always written 100% uh, of Boat's music. He wrote, you know, the, he wrote the lyrics, the chords, and all the parts, the drums, the keys, the guitar. And uh, that was kind of what we came here to get away from so that we would learn to collaborate as a group. And what we're finding is Matt's still the main songwriter. That keyboard stuff on the chorus, I really hate it. He writes uh, all of our lyrics and he usually comes up with the idea of the song. Keep what you were just doing, but maybe we'll bring that in after the... Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Good call. I'm not, like, really um, privy to uh, the, the way that, that, that boats write together um, by themselves. I know he said at the beginning that, that he wanted to collaborate more with the, the, the musicians in his own band, but, I mean, I don't know. I, I think the easy answer is that I'm just kind of a control freak. Um, I've always found that making music is a very personal and private thing. It's kind of just seemed intrusive to me to, to make music with other people because then I would feel like I would come out with something that is not what I've been doing. I think, you know, it's hard to tell people to just play. And I think that's something everyone should know. They should know how to just close their eyes, listen to their heart. It's BPM, it's 120 BPM, let's go. That's a heartbeat. Close your eyes and play. I would look them up as I was uh, checking them out and I could see that Bell Game was doing well, you know, they were getting out of their city and I thought, all right, if they're honestly ready to come here and listen and, and, and get into it, this will really benefit them. Our main goal is to basically just have this time to write for our next album. They kind of came here and they were serious about it, too serious at times. Sometimes we tend to be a really anxious band. Maybe we can learn to let go a little bit and enjoy the musicality of it a bit more rather than being, you know, putting so much pressure on ourselves all the time and being influenced by, I mean, bands, right? Does it get much better? So. <laughs> it's not a rational way to make a living. You have to have some luck. That's hands down. I mean, no matter how hard you work, no matter how good you are, everybody's got a story. I made a phone call on the right day. I ran into someone on the street. I happened to do, you know, everybody's got a story like that. My name's Lara dodds -Eden. I'm here as an associate artist helping to program the concerts and support the other residents um, who are pursuing their projects here. I mean, what a, what a gift to have her come in and just say, I want to do, I want you and I want you and I want you and I want, I want you to come and sing either your songs in a classical manner or these other classical songs. Just sometimes it just takes one person to be like, I'd like to do this and then you go and do it. Can you play Pick a Melody? And I thought for Luke, I went up to him and said, look, you know, Lara wants to do this Chopin song. And I said, would you do it? And he said, yep. And I was just nervous that he wouldn't, because that's putting yourself out there. It's ballsy. I was really excited by their song, Punching Underwater, and I was talking to Luke last night. We'd been rehearsing Schubert, and, and I, I was asking him about the lyrics and, and where they came from, and he was talking about sleeping and having trouble sleeping and how we feel at night. And this morning I was thinking about 
nighttime and what music there is in the classical tradition that talks about nighttime and of course nocturnes. Oh, and then yeah, I just like <laughs> So the, if you guys hold tight to your harmonies, we think it works. Okay. We're trying to yeah. work out that it works. Okay. So my idea is that... And I started playing and, they, and Antonio recognised it. He was like, oh yeah, I know this one. This is beautiful, right? Okay, so it's I'll do the trill. Thing. Okay. I'll do the trill and that's yep. the invitation. Both times. Okay. It's a space. Pedal lift. Yeah. Wow. At the end. I took my wiggle. I took the wiggle. Put it in the wrong place. I did, didn't I? Yeah. Stole the wiggle. Any more? Sure. But you guys got your eyes shut. Haven't you? Just, uh, can you leave me more? So I know where sure. it is. There's... Yeah, I've been going more with the percussive yeah, I've been instrument following because that's you. I've been following time. you as well. I mean, I don't know yeah. how, what your guys' band is like. Like, do you not do overdubs? Do you not? Oh no, do we only oh, do overdubs. Yeah, we yeah, yeah. never recorded live. 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 Sometimes it, it takes some added perspective to work out what's going to be best, which is what is really great about working here is that um, having that outside eye to help us put our stuff together, which we've never had before, and it's really helpful. Sorry? Does that mean you're done organizing your headphones? Yeah! Gosh! Ready? Oh, yeah! Sean is this insane spout of ideas who constantly has new and new and new ideas. Even when you've been uh, recording in the studio until uh, 2 a.m. and you started at 1 and so he's on his 13th hour and he's still pitching new ideas. Cool. Can we do one more? I'm gonna change your amp. Sure. And you kind of need to remind him that it's time to go to bed. For me, all I really care about is at the end of the day if it's awesome. Can I hear your voice? Oh. Ooh. And I not better. When you work within a band, it's so easy to kind of just get locked into your ideas. And um, Kevin Drew, he's been such a, such a, I don't know the right word, but it's like going to couples counseling or something like that. Someone neutral who will help kind of break the mold and um, shake things up a little bit or offer something that's maybe outside your comfort zone or outside your, your perspective. You know, a young band, you're just always worried all the time and thinking all the time, and you want it, and you need it, and it, it represents who you are, and I've been trying to sort of slowly through conversation take that away from them and just cut the BS and just tell them to close their eyes and play. I just wanted them to find a little bit more of themselves. I think as you get older and as you do anything, you become more confident in doing it, and I think coming here really built their confidence up. It's your face I know, although it can toast Like a string of lead I messed up that last no, night last night. I just came into it early. Can we go? And I... So, because what I want to do is... Is it weird when he leaves? Uh... No, 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 that's, that, that's that works great. for sure, yeah. that works, yeah, that, that works, definitely yeah. works. Together. Yeah, yeah. It's sort of, I, I think it's, it's kind of ticking off something, but mm -hmm. we've got to sort mm -hmm. out the final phrase. Yeah. There was only a tiny bit of hesitation about where to come in, but then it, it fit. It went pretty easily. With these guys, it's, it's all about being musicians together and sharing a space together, and that's it that there's no like, oh, they're in a band and I'm a classical musician, even though I've been talking in those terms. It's so much about ear and it's so much about feel and, and that's really, f I feel really free in that setting. It's wonderful when you see people click because you never know. You just really don't know and this was a wonderful thing to watch.
I know with Luke, he really wanted to spend most of the time he, he could with boys who say no. And then you cut to 10 days later, he's, he's, they're practically doing every classical piece for the show that we did on Wednesday. They started collaborating. They really just started to realize that, no, 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 this is what it's about here. As the day goes on, it just like kind of ramps up and the more kind of like ideas that everyone brings to the table stack on top of each other and you can finally see kind of an end game and then that's when it gets really exciting. Well, I think I'd like to get the vocals in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah let's, do, okay. let's, do, let's do some vocals and I, and, and I really think we could benefit from just how incredibly fast this is all been happening and maybe try another one. Well, I mean, I, I'd like to, let's focus on this one and get it as good as it can be. And then we'll go. So, do you have an alternate where it does less A's at the end? Why? Uh, that's what the question was. Let's hear the other one. <laughs> Stone soup. You know the story of stone soup? Imagine a time when there's very little to eat and one guy decides that he wants to make a bowl of soup. So he puts a stone in the soup and fills it with water and starts cooking it. And then somebody comes by and says, uh, what are you cooking? What, uh, what's the plan? Um, I have two songs that I think could, we could do. Mm -hmm. um, and I think what we should do is get um, sort of a scratched live take of both, and then I'm going to have some string players come down. Awesome. Because then they can lay down their part, we can always redo my part, but yeah. then it doesn't waste their time. And the person walking by says, you know, that would be a lot better uh, a with a carrot. I have a carrot. Yeah. I can go and get my carrot. And somebody else comes by and says, what are you cooking? Well, it's stone soup with a carrot. Started out at the riverbed where we lay By the smoker Somebody else comes by with some chicken bones, and somebody else comes by with some potatoes, and the next thing you know, there's enough food for everybody, and it's a delicious pot of soup. So that's kind of the analogy we're using for this recording. Mm -hmm. We decided that we would try an experiment where we write a song essentially from scratch. It's, it's where we would bring in one musician at a time to record their part, and then the next musician would come in and listen to what the previous musician had done, and then add to it. Come on this side, then that might open. So I'll play back the uh, the last of those melodic bits that you played earlier. Yeah, like the. Yeah, this one. Yeah, I'll just give you one of those melodic bits. We didn't really provide them too much melody at first. It was just percussion, and so we gave them the key and sort of said to you know a little bit of direction, but we just basically supplied the space to sort of do whatever they like and we'd pick out the good bits that stood out and then we would get them to maybe do it again. Mm -hmm. It's like coming so, on time like, when you play like C, yeah. C B C, yeah. La si do si do re mi. Yeah. Then there you are always right. ahead, but it's impossible, you know. Yeah. It's like for me, I'm used to you know showing up at a rehearsal. Everything is planned out. It's going to be from two to four. The music is there on your stand. You've practiced it, and everyone's you know it's all the same. And so getting out of that and maybe getting more into improvisation or. Um, it was, it's so much more relaxed and more, I don't know, it just happens. It's, it's, it's funny to, to be with her, like last night, we were like until really late improvising after rehearsing and stuff. And it's good because, you know, so you feel like she's like an, a new instrument. Ready? All right, let's try it. <laughs> Float away, so if 
I'd float away. You know, Kat, she just embraced the whole idea of what this is. Come in, don't take it so seriously, work. And I think being on her own and coming here, she got the best out of it, that's for sure. Boats hopefully will be a band now where they all write songs together and when they get their soak in checks, it's split up. Give it up for boys who say no, ladies and gentlemen, they're ready to go. This is probably one of the best trips they've ever had as a band. It's given them time to be together and it's been really interesting to sit and watch their process while they've been here. Bell Game's going to stop putting all this pressure on themselves and realize that, you know, you can be innovative within and create sounds that are yours and not work so hard at it, but just let it happen because they have a really great natural flow to themselves. So everyone's coming out with something, but I think what they're really coming out with is an experience to get away, to have the time to figure things out. Does everybody want to come out? Because you can do that. That's how, that's how they do it in the biz. Thanks for coming, everybody. That's really sweet. Here's the bands. Here they are. We have a good time. A little too much time at the Mac Lab, personally, but I'm glad that's over.